Welcome back to Make Me Join a Space Activist. Sorry I haven't, um, you know, done a video in a while, and that's because I've been investing my time in other things, which I will present to you in the, not near, but in the future. So, I, and I know you're probably excited about Megaforce. Um, we, some people have, we've, we have already selected, but there are still thousands, if not <laughs> tens of thousands of applications. So we're still looking through the applications and we still haven't actually decided on all of the members on Megaforce. So if you haven't been chosen yet, don't be worried. There still is time when we just haven't selected everyone. Um, today and now most, of, some of you actually, are actually going to school at this point, um, due to the coronavirus uh, the pandemic. So I'm actually going to share some of my knowledge about physics with you. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is the force of gravitational, new, the Newtonian mechanics. So we'll be doing the force of gravitational attraction, according to Isaac Newton. Because, you know, gravitational attraction, there have been many, you know, debates about how, you know, what really is gravitational attraction. But today we're going to be looking at Newton's point of view with gravitational attraction and how it's accurate. But when, how, when it gets to the speed of light, things start to change. So, with any further ado, let's get right into it. So let's start by explaining what really is gravitational attraction. To demonstrate this, I'll need two volunteers. I'll just use you, 9 volt battery, and I'll also use you, LCD screen. So, you know that these objects here, they have a force of gravitational attraction between them. The force, they're actually attracted to each other. This happens on a bigger scale. With planets, you can see how planets orbit each other. Sorry about the police car. Um, so yeah, they, they're, they're attracted by each other. And now, actually, this is actually expressed by an equation. Now, the distance between them squared, uh, the d bit here, I actually just represent this as d. You might also see it as r squared, but some people, most people mistake it for radius. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to call it D. Because it's not radius, it actually means distance. So, let's start with this equation. Force equals G times the mass of the first object, 9 more battery or whatever object we're using, um, and multiplied by the mass of the second object divided by the distance between them squared. And now this will give you an answer in Newton that it's that simple. It's actually that simple. So, and yeah, so these two units are in the mass of kilograms. Let's just say we have two objects that are now weighing, let's say, 60 kilograms, okay? Let's say we have object one equals 60 kilograms, okay? And object two could be 50 kilograms. Okay, the distance between them, let's say, is about one meter, because one's an easy number to use. Um... And yeah, G, obviously, uh, so G, uh, it's G is, a, the G is the gravitational constant. In the easy way to remember what G is, is it's just G equals zero point, and there's, after the decimal point, there's ten zeros. That's an easy way to remember how many digits there are, there's literally ten zeros. Um, Uh, okay, um, so this is the gravitational constant. Okay, and then now we just literally get our force in newtons. We just need to put this into the formula. If we put this in, this is what we're going to get: the force of gravitational attraction between these 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 heavy sixty kilograms and fifty kilogram objects. Okay. Um, okay, so so we have g. We're so multiplying g by sixty times 50 divided by 1 squared and if you work this out in newtons your force of gravitational attraction would be zero point zero 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 two zero zero one newtons 
And yes, you guessed it. Newtons are named after the famous physicist Isaac Newton. It's a we don't that that's just a way of representing force, which is how we do them in physics. Now the thing is, this works just for everyday physics. You know, just calculating how much gravitational attraction is the person sitting next to you on a bench. It work, works like that. But what if things are a bit more well, let's like say speedy? What if you're travelling near the speed of light? Then things start things start to change. If you're traveling at the speed of light, which according to classical physics is impossible, but there is a few debates about that, um, things actually start to change. And Albert Einstein um, had a completely different formula for gravitational attraction when you start to get to the speed of light. But that's the whole entire topic, because gravitational attraction is actually a big topic. And today we covered Isaac Newton's gravitational attraction theory. And in another video, we're going to cover um, Albert Einstein's um, theory and how the two are actually linked together greatly. Um, yeah, but this formula works for everyday physics. If you're traveling at the speed of light, which I hope you're probably not at this point because, you know, time will start to get dilated. But <laughs> So watching this video will be a bit slower. But that's a whole different topic and you can actually find my video on time dilation if you really want to go into that. But... This should work for everyday equations. So, what's the gravitational attraction between me and the person sitting there? Put it into the formula. Done. Um, what's the gravitational attraction between the 9-volt battery and the, like say this time, not the LCD screen, the dot matrix? Put it into the formula. It's that simple. And everything is literally defined by this formula, unless you're traveling at the speed of light. So, if you're, if you're ever dealing with um, equations which travel at the speed of light, just, yeah. Uh, you need to use the other formula, which I'll show you in another video. If you want to work out how, if they're going to travel next to each other, you could use F equals MA. But that's another video. You can watch my video on Newton's Laws if you want to work it out. If you watch that video, you watch this video, you can combine it together, and you can actually find out what mass, uh, mass of the, uh, what object one and object two will be distance between them in one hour. If they're attractive, if they're gravitational, when they're gravitationally attractive. So, Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.